Since the custom mechanical keyboards hobby started to gain more and more mainstream followers in the last three to five years, we all knew that at some point, larger players in the PC peripherals industry would eventually pay attention and try to capitalize on this trend. And while industry giants such as Logitech, Corsair, SteelSeries, Razer and others dipped their toes into higher quality mechanical keyboards in the last few years with slightly better construction, smaller form factors, smoother and more modern switch designs and better keycaps, none of these had the courage or the foresight to actually jump in head first and try to offer a product that could actually make keyboard enthusiasts pay attention. But then, none of those big players could either predict the meteoric arrival of an industry newcomer that while almost unheard of until 2018, would eventually take the market by storm later on with the 2019 debut of their lightweight gaming mouse, the Glorious Model O. And after hitting them with that hook, Glorious hardballs kept on coming at a breakneck pace, and all the while flashing their irreverent branding spawned out of internet memes and its guerrilla tongue-in-cheek marketing antics. But then, after leaving their mark on the mice segment, with over 1 million Model O's and Model D's sold worldwide, Glorious stroke again last November with yet another curveball no one saw coming. The announcement of their enthusiast-grade GMMK Pro hot-swappable mechanical keyboard. While not their first foray into mechanical keyboards, that would in fact be their original GMMK release all the way back in 2016, which was the first widely available mechanical keyboard with hot-swappable switch sockets, the GMMK Pro was designed to achieve a much more ambitious goal. This time, they wanted to kick the doors into the booming enthusiast custom mechanical keyboard scene with a product that checked all the right boxes for the features these enthusiasts were looking for, while drastically undercutting the pricey and luxurious small production designer boards that had been proliferating on GeekHacks group buys. And today, we are grinding this keyboard, IO Sam style, to see if after all the hype, Glorious is indeed delivering the goods with their $170 GMMK Pro. As we do things around here, we're not only going to give you an honest review of the product out of the box, but we'll also dig deeper to see what kinds of simple and inexpensive changes you can make to this keyboard to improve it even further, without having to buy any of the additional overpriced accessories from Glorious. So, without further ado, let's get this thing rolling. Hello and welcome to IO Sam. My name is Sam Franco, and this is a channel where I do tech reviews and show you how to build, fix, and mod all sorts of computer gear. Today we are reviewing the GMMK Pro from Glorious PC Gaming Race. And yes, I know, we all have been bombarded by a blitzkrieg of launch day reviews and first impression videos already. But as those who have been around this channel before already know, we do things a little different here. So, if you're new to the channel first, welcome. And second, while I don't put out too many videos per month, when I do, I try to do my homework and go beyond just giving quick impressions, ratings, and recommendations. I always take upon myself the task to not only show products pros and cons, but also to help you improve their shortcomings, if at all possible, and always without spending too much money at that. And today's video is no different. First, we'll do a thorough review of the stock GMMK Pro that I have used for a full month of daily use, then we'll move on to some suggested mods that you can do on your own to fix some of its problems. One thing I made sure to do here was to not buy any of Gloria's dozens of accessories they try to push when you order this keyboard. I wanted to give you a super in-depth review of specifically what comes in the GMMK Pro box, and then show you how you can make it better without having to purchase extra plates, knobs, or tools from Gloria's. While I think the actual keyboard is fairly priced for what you get, I'd say a lot of the accessories Glorious offers to go along with this board are a bit overpriced. Of course, I had to use switches and keycaps of my own, since this keyboard does not come with those in the box, so that obviously does not apply to these. And for those, I use switches and keycaps from other suppliers, which I'll detail later in the video. As usual, I'll break everything into chapters with progress bars in the bottom and top of the screen to help you navigate my long-form videos in case you want to jump to any specific chapter. And as a disclaimer, while I do have an affiliate program relationship with Glorious, they did not send me this keyboard for review and I bought this GMMK Pro with my own money. But regardless of how I obtain products for this channel, you should know that the scripts for my videos are always my own and you can trust that my views and opinions about all products showed here are 100% mine. 
always derived out of my own experience using the products for at least a few weeks, if not months, and with no inputs or influence from manufacturers, resellers, or their marketing teams. As I mentioned before, I do have affiliate links for everything I show in this video, and if you buy anything out of those links, I might get a small commission without any additional cost to you. But that, of course, does not play any role in the context or the content of the video. I do this video solely out of passion for technology, and while this channel is 100% a hobby, it is one that I take very seriously. The GMMK Pro is an all-aluminium constructed keyboard that comes pre-assembled with case, plate, PCB, stabilizers, and damping foam. It is designed to be ready for you to just install your favorite switches and keycaps and be done with it. It has a 75% layout, meaning it keeps almost all the same keys you would have on a TKL board, but on a smaller footprint, with exploded navigation, arrow keys, function row, and a volume knob that also functions as a mute key. It has a gasket mounting system for its plate and PCB, which you can think of either as a shock absorption system that eliminates vibrations and noise, or as a suspension mechanism that supposedly improves the typing feel and sound of the board. It has hot swappable switch sockets, meaning you can use any MX style switches in it and replace them without having to solder anything which is one of this keyboard's main selling points. It has south-facing per-key RGB illumination, as well as some accent side lights. It also offers software programmability through its own glorious core application, as well as QMK compatibility for those brave souls out there who would like to completely reprogram the layout and layers of this keyboard through firmware flash. While Glorious has advertised this board as VIA compatible, such compatibility has not happened yet when the script was written. It sells for $170 with free shipping in the US when you buy it directly from Gloria's own website, which is where I obtained my copy after paying a $70 reservation fee in November of 2020 and then paying the remaining $100 in March of 2021 and receiving the product on the following April. Gloria's promises that once the initial reservations are fulfilled, they will keep this keyboard constantly in stock going forward, which should happen at some point before the second half of 2021. The keyboard comes well-packed with some basic accessories and sports a two-years limited warranty. While the focus of this video is the actual product and not necessarily the company behind it, I think it's worth spending a few minutes here to cover the topic of Glorious as a company and its practices as well. Since I know a lot of people out there have strong opinions about these things and might even have stronger ones about Glorious as a player in the PC peripherals industry in general, and in the mechanical keyboard segment in particular. Besides, I think this will also give a better context to understand why this product is what it is. But if you're not one of those, and you don't care about the company behind the product or any of the drama they've been involved with in the past, sure, feel free to skip this chapter altogether and go straight to the next one, where I cover the GMMK Pro options and accessories. Glorious is a relatively young PC gaming peripheral brand established in 2014 out of Dallas, Texas. By their own words, Glorious is a lifestyle gaming hardware company built by passionate enthusiasts on a mission to change the status quo of an industry that they think is in dire need of a shakeup. They want to help enthusiasts and professional gamers ascend their battle station with the best quality gear possible and reasonable prices. That sounds like a good motive for a PC peripherals company as far as I'm concerned. And I guess we can all agree that they have been really taking seriously the part about changing the status quo of the industry. They started selling mouse pads and keyboard wrist rests, but then moved quickly to actual peripherals like keyboards, such as the original GMMK, that I used as the basis for my first project video on this channel in September of 2020, which you can check here, and their popular gaming mice with their line of models O, O-, O Wireless, D, and D-. Their products have, for the most part, been well received by the market at large considering how many gaming mice they were able to sell so far. They seem to have been executing very much in line to their company goals by releasing innovative products for very aggressive prices. As for the quality of their products, I know lots of people who had good experiences with them, myself included, but also some very loud few who swear they'll never buy anything from them again. But since this tends to be the same story for pretty much any brand of almost any type of product out there, I'd say Glorious is not a standout in this regard. In my own experience here, I have been pretty happy with my Glorious products purchases overall. I now own two Glorious keyboards, 
three mice and one wrist rest, and they all performed according to my expectations for the most part. Certainly not perfect, but again, within my expectations for what I paid for the products. And these are the key words here, expectations for the price. Take their most recent mouse release, for example, the Model O Wireless. While not a 100% perfect product by any stretch, it has been by far the best value in a gaming wireless mouse I ever bought for a very competitive 80 US dollars, which is far more accessible than what the big boys such as Razer, Logitech, SteelSeries and others had been charging for their equivalent products so far. And while their first versions of the Model O had issues with their cable and packaging, Glorious did a good job in listening to their customers and fixing those issues in subsequent versions of their products, as well as trying their best, as the small company they are if compared to other competitors, to offer a decent customer service experience, at least here in the US. And the impact has been felt across the industry. Razer, in particular, has been gradually cutting its own gaming mice prices as what I can only imagine to be a response to Glorious and other smaller and similarly aggressive gaming peripherals brands that have popped up in the scene in the last few years. Same thing can be said about their first foray into mechanical keyboard switches with their Glorious Panda. Not the best tactile switch ever made, but a damn good one for the price that is always in stock. You can check my own video review and comparison of Invert, Yoke, and Glorious Pandas on the link I'll leave in the description below and on the card up here. And while Glorious is no stranger to keyboards, since their original GMMK hot swappable board was released all the way back in 2016, they now decided to gun for a different spot in the market. You see, when they released the original GMMK, they were basically aiming for the gaming market, but also with a keen eye in the burgeoning enthusiast mechanical keyboard scene that was starting to break into the mainstream at the time. But while the original GMMK was very much a value-oriented product trying to innovate its way to the top with an aluminum plate, hot swappable sockets, multiple layouts and sizes, and a removable cable, the GMMK Pro is a much more ambitious project, very much designed to appeal specifically to a much more demanding and lucrative segment of the market, the aspiring mechanical keyboard enthusiasts out there. You know who you are. And if the number of new YouTubers covering mechanical keyboards of all types is any indication of how much this industry has grown and how much more growth potential it still has, I'd say Glorious is right on the money here once again. Now, I know that their tongue-in-cheek branding and marketing style, originated from a gamer's meme no less, is not everyone's cup of tea. As a company who spends pretty much no money with traditional advertising or sponsorships, their use of social media and influencers have roughened some feathers out there for sure. But hey, this is a classic case of don't hate the player, hate the game, right? This is a cutthroat competitive market, and if they had any hope to compete with behemoths such as Logitech and Razer, they had to resort to guerrilla marketing. I don't think they had any other choice. In my particular case, I honestly don't care about marketing. As the value-oriented consumer I am, as long as their products fulfill my expectations of quality and features for a fair price, I'm more than happy to overlook marketing gimmicks. And the last thing to cover in this chapter is the fact that Glorious can certainly be accused of over-promising and under-delivering in some areas, and that is another thing that has roughened some feathers as well. And while they're not the first ones to do it, and will certainly not be the last, they and any other company who does this should be called out for these instances. And they surely have been by many reviewers out there and will be in this video as well. The Jim MK Pro comes in two flavors, Black Slate, which is the one I have here, and White Ice, which as you certainly heard by now, is actually silver, just silver. The color also applies to the included plate, PCB and cable, which are black on the Black Slate version and silver plate and white PCB and cable for the White Ice version. Now, where Glorious really went overboard here is on the mind-numbing amount of accessories they'll try to push on you when you order this keyboard. And as I said before, I didn't buy any of those. I mean, there's nothing particularly wrong with their choices of switches, their fairly priced new PBT keycaps options, or any of the dozens of other accessories. But as an enthusiast, I wanted to evaluate the GMMK Pro on its own merits for its asking price of $170. But if you want to go crazy with plates made with different materials, fancy keycap and switch pullers, openers, lubricants, as well as lubing brushes and stations, coiled cables, PBT keycaps, switches, cleaning kits, toys and more, Glorious definitely has you covered here. 
In the box, you get the keyboard properly packed in some tough foam to protect this heavy boy, as well as some basic plastic keycap puller that is worse than the wire one I got on my $85 Echo board. A pretty much unusable switch puller, two cards with some basic instructions about where to get support, firmware upgrade and warranty, and a standard cable, black in my case, which I immediately proceeded to mod on my own to make it a golden coil cable with some yellow tech flex I had laying around. Come on, don't judge me. And no dust cover included. But at least they were nice enough to include some extra gaskets in case you want to mod the board's plate mounting, which, as we'll see later on in the video, will come really handy. Props to Glorious for being mod friendly here. If you want an in depth manual for the product, you have to get it from Gloria's website, which is fine, I guess. Most people don't care about reading the freaking menu anyway, right? And the other thing you have to download from their website is their app, the Glorious Core. You need it to do the first firmware upgrade that is designed to fix some issues the keyboard already has right out of the box, as well as to remap keys and control the backlighting. While the software is a bit basic in what it allows you to do, it at least covers all the bases, and it is miles better than the one Glorious had for the original GMMK. But we'll get to more details on that later in the video. The 75% layout of the GMMK Pro is of the exploded variety. That was a clear attempt by Glorious to follow the trend from custom luxury boards such as Canon Key's Satisfaction 75, the Gox 7V, or the TXHJ75 which all helped making the exploded layout popular in the last year or so. Traditional 75% keyboards usually have a very dense layout with no empty space between clusters, which is great to save space, but can be an issue to some people for being too cramped and difficult to locate keys without looking down at the keyboard. While I like the traditional 75% layout specifically for their space-saving qualities, I have to admit that the exploded variation is indeed easier to use so it is totally worth trade-off taking a bit more space for better usability. The build quality of the GMMK Pro is one of the high points of this board in my opinion. It is overall a very solid build keyboard. The case and the plate are anodized aluminum with mostly thick walls, especially on the bottom half of the case, with the exception of the side walls of the top frame that are on the thin side and can even bend if you push them. The anodization process here, at least in my copy, is clean, if a bit grainy, and free of any visible blemishes. My only gripe here is how much of a fingerprint magnet this thing is on my black collar, which I suspect it won't be as bad if you get the silver one. I'm sure you can find some minor marks here or there if you really look for it, but for this price point, I don't think you can get anything better than this, really. And I'm also sure you can get higher quality anodized aluminum out there for more money, but I'm definitely not complaining about the GMMK Pro in this regard. This is on a completely different league when compared to plastic production and entry-level custom boards, which is what this will compete with to a certain extent. The aluminum parts of this keyboard seem to have been cast and stamped instead of CNC milled, and while metal cast or stamped parts might not have the same precise and sharp cuts as milled ones, it is still great to have an all-metal construction like this nonetheless. A metal cast case is for sure cheaper and quicker to manufacture in scale than a milled one, so it makes total sense for a product that is certainly being made by the thousands such as this one. As already mentioned, this keyboard comes with pre-installed gaskets on the bottom case and on the top frame. The material used seems to be poron, and it has the right resistance and flexibility for this application. But looking at some of the bottom gaskets, you can already see how tight the whole assembly really is which is something we'll look into in more details later on in the video. The top frame also has additional bumpers on the perimeter to help guide the positioning of the plate, which provides a solid fit with no horizontal wiggle, which is perfect. They used four different types of screws to hold the two halves of the case together, to attach the plate to the PCB on the perimeter, for the standoffs in the middle, and to secure the light diffusers on the sides. At least in my copy, they all have withstand the abuse of the half a dozen times I have opened this keyboard for all different experiments I did here. The foam included as sound dampers are of good density and come pre-installed. So if you're buying this keyboard to just install switches and keycaps and move on, you'll never see them. 
but they are there and have good quality. The PCB is well laid out, seems to have decently thick layers and use Gloria's own branded hot swap sockets. The rotary knob has worked fine for a month, but is one area of concern for long-term durability since it is one of those moving parts with a much greater chance of failure alongside the hot swap sockets than the rest of the solid state components used here. The actual knob has what seems to be a plastic fitting inside, which is another potential failure point, but it uses a standard shape and size and will be super easy to replace, so no big deal here. Overall, all the parts and their fittings are of very good quality, again, for a larger scale production keyboard with a $170 price tag. While there are some questionable design choices made by Glorious in the way they designed the gasket mounting system or the side accent lights here, we can at least commend them for striving for using quality materials that are meant to last. The keyboard measures 33 centimeters in width, 13.5 centimeters in depth, 2.1 centimeters in the front side, and 3.4 centimeters in height on the back side. Since it doesn't offer adjustable height, you get a 5 degrees typing angle when measured on top of the third row of the keycaps, which at least for my typing style is fairly comfortable to use. At any rate, I always use a wrist rest for high profile keyboards like this. Here, I'm using Gloria's own wood TKL sized wrist rest in their Onyx color, which I had already purchased from Drop surplus website Yumbo's Closet in early 2020. The board weights 1.7 kilograms or 3 pounds and 12 ounces with switches and ABS Cherry Profile keycaps already installed. Needless to say, this thing is heavy enough to not budge on your desk no matter what you do. While looks are subjective, I'd say Glorious played safe here with this design. There's nothing in this keyboard that screams gamer, for example. And the black or silver colors are not offensive and will go well with keycaps of any profile or color schemes. The glorious branding indented on the bottom is huge, but then again, it's on the bottom, so no points taken for this since I'm not the type who cares too much about what is displayed on the bottom of a keyboard. It is basically straight lines and sharp angles everywhere, which I'm always happy with. They also follow the high-profile trend of the custom keyboards community, which is nice. Although, it would have been better if they had made the sidewalls a couple of millimeters higher to completely hide the switches, but to me at least, that is a minor gripe. The other thing they could have made better is the side accent lights. Even on their maximum brightness, they don't cast any glow on my desk. And I'm of the opinion that if you go through the trouble of adding a light bar on the side of the keyboard, you might as well allow me to dial it up until I can see a glow, right? While I don't think these side lights are ugly, I think they don't add anything to the design with the way they were implemented here. Now, I obviously can't say if an exploded 75% layout with a knob is the kind of thing that will be visually appealing to everyone. I've seen all sorts of opinions on the matter from this thing looks amazing all the way to this thing looks hideous. To my aesthetics, I love the way it looks, especially when I put black and white spherical keycaps on it. Perfecto. The USB-C port is on the center, which I do like, and recessed enough to hide the metal part of the USB-C prong from sight. It is housed on a daughter board screwed to the bottom case and connected to the PCB via JST connector, which has its own cable channel. Nice touch. Although it is slightly inclined upward and not parallel to the desk, which can make it a bit tricky to connect the cable when you're not looking directly at the port. The GMMK Pro already comes damped with both a case foam installed in the bottom and a plate foam to close the gap with the PCB. This one came glued to the plate and I didn't remove it. As I mentioned before, this is fairly dense open cell foam and it really does a good job of muting this keyboard. As you'll hear on the typing test later, you might not like the tone of this keyboard sound, but you can't deny that these pieces of foam do a good job to lower the noise levels of this board and basically kill any ping noise from the switches. Now, one piece of criticism I heard from other reviewers about the foam used here is that they reduce the range of motion and the flexibility of an already tightly squeezed plate, which, while true to some extent, might not necessarily be a problem to everybody, as we'll discuss in a minute. I think this keyboard sound damping should work fine for the majority of people who buy this keyboard, and only those who like a slightly louder type and experience will bother to remove one or both pieces of foam. If you pick this board to use in an open office environment or any type of shared room, 
The stock configuration with some decent linear or tactile switches should work really well to ensure you don't annoy the people working close to you. In my case, I ended up replacing the case foam for a sheet of thin silicone, as I'll explain later on in the modding chapter. But honestly, I wouldn't have any problem using this keyboard with the stock case foam if I had to. The plate of the GMMK Pro is sandwiched between the bottom case and the top frame, but isolated with foam gaskets. And if you have been anywhere near the custom mechanical keyboard scene in the last couple of years, you know that gasket-mounted plate keyboards have been all the rage amongst enthusiasts, to a point where the vast majority of custom-designed keyboards sold through group buys in the last year or so had this type of plate mounting mechanism inside. In most industrial applications, anytime you use elastomeric gaskets, meaning gaskets that are made of soft elastomer materials, they are usually applied to reduce friction and vibration between solid parts, especially metals, or to seal against gases or liquids. And while I'm fairly confident that the first uses of gaskets on keyboard's plates had the implicit goal of reducing vibration between metal parts and thus reducing unpleasant friction and rattling noises, with time, it seems that this type of design acquired a new purpose, whether intentionally or not, plate and PCB flexing. And this particular meaning of the gasket use in keyboards kind of took a life of its own. So today, whenever you mention gasket mounting to keyboard enthusiasts out there, I'd say the vast majority of them will immediately think of a shock absorption mechanism, not unlike the suspension between a car's wheels and its chassis, for example. And thus, they expect a keyboard that has a soft and bouncy typing feel. Now, I'm not going to get into the minefield that would be to argue if this is a correct or incorrect interpretation of the role of gaskets on keyboards. I'm not touching that one with a 10-foot pole. But I'll just say that outside of softening the plate for your fingers, gaskets also are very good to absorb the energy coming from them when you type, and thus reducing the friction between the plate and the keyboard case, which are both metal in the case of the GMMK Pro. And the immediate result of this is the complete absence of friction and a severe reduction in resonance that usually causes rattling and pinging noises when you type. In other words, the gasket mounting system of the GMMK Pro in conjunction with the included damping foam sheets work very well to tame the acoustics of the board. At least in that regard, the gasket mounting system here does work very well and this is an area where this keyboard really excels at, overall noise levels, which of course, are also a factor of the type of switch and keycaps you use, but under normal circumstances, say using lube, linear, or tactile switches, this keyboard will be quieter than most. Now, having low noise levels and sounding good are of course two very different things, and I'll leave it up to you to decide if this keyboard sounds good or not after you hear the typing sound test later on in the video. But at least I can say that even if you don't intend this keyboard to be a silent keyboard, with damped switches, for example, this board will still be far less noisy than most other production keyboards you can buy out there. And again, it is up to each one of you to decide if this is something you want or not. I know that a lot of keyboard enthusiasts out there actually want and like louder keyboards as long as the noise follows a certain pattern that they appreciate. And for those enthusiasts, they might find the GMMK Pro to be too muted. What about the plate and PCB flex, you might ask? Well. That is the part where Glorious didn't necessarily get right here. Because there isn't enough space between the top frame and the bottom part of the case, the gaskets here don't have a lot of room to flex. And that, compounded by the fact that the plate and the PCB are attached by no less than 12 screws on the perimeter and two more in the center with the standoffs between them, this means the GMMK Pro has almost no plate flex to speak of. And while this shouldn't be a problem to most people out there, it might be a problem to some keyboard enthusiasts depending on their expectations derived from the use of gaskets here. If you expect a super bouncy typing feel, you're not going to get it with the GMMK Pro out of the box with its stock aluminum plate. But there are ways to work around this issue, of course. For one, whenever you use switches with heavier springs, for example, you are already maybe unintentionally diminishing the importance of super flexible plate since the switch's springs themselves will already cushion your typing force to some extent. If that's not enough for you, then you can opt to buy Glorious optional polycarbonate plate, which should give a bit more flexibility since plastic is obviously softer than aluminum, but not by much, since the plate will still be tightly sandwiched between the parts of the case 
the same way in this design. And thirdly, there is a very simple mod you can do using rubber O-rings that can reduce the pressure from the two halves of the case against the plate. And we'll give it a bit more room to flex, but we'll get to that in a minute. At any rate, to close this very long plate chapter, we can say that the GMMK Pro does benefit acoustically from having gaskets between the plate and the two halves of the case, in the sense that it eliminates vibrations and thus reduces unpleasant noises. But the gaskets here do not offer a softer typing feel out of the box than what you'd get on a top mount or sandwich mount keyboard, for example. Now, moving on to the stock stabs included with the GMMK Pro. Remember when I mentioned earlier in the video that there were some cases where Glorious had overpromised and underdelivered? Well, this is one of those. And here's where Glorious tongue in cheek marketing backfired. They decided to call their new stabilizers the GOAT stabilizers. Greatest of all time. Used to refer to or describe the person who has performed better than anyone else ever. Nah. Nope. Not even close. Now, don't get me wrong. These are not the worst tabs I've ever used, but they are definitely not the best, that's for sure. When marketing something, one has to know how to set expectations. They are PCB screw mounted, which is great, and they come generously lubed and sounded pretty okay for the smaller stabilized keys. The issue though was the space bar, which while not super readily or loud, still had a bit of a tick noise in its right side that was basically impossible to get rid of with lube. The PCB, as mentioned before, is attached to the plate with 12 screws on the perimeter and two in the center through little metal standoffs. It has SMD LEDs for per-key illumination, plus two rows of eight additional LEDs on each side to illuminate the two side accent lights. The per-key illumination will work well with the included aluminum plate if you use translucent switches, such as the Gateron ink yellows I'm showing here. But if you go with opaque, or worse, opaque switches with no opening for SMD LEDs at the bottom, such as the alpacas and the SP stars I tested with, then you basically get no light under the switches whatsoever. And that will be a case where the Polycar plate could be a good option for you if you care about having RGB glow under the switches. And I say glow because that is the best you're going to get here, since this keyboard has south-facing switches which means you're not going to find keycaps with translucent legends at the bottom. The best you'll be able to do here would be with pudding style caps. But then, good luck finding one that has a 1.75 units right shift key you need for this layout. This Loop Pudding V2 double shot PBT set I got from Drop does come with one, but the majority of the pudding sets on Amazon do not. As for the south facing orientation of the switches, this is something enthusiasts usually praise, since some switches, when paired with some Cherry Profile keycaps, can interfere with each other in some roles and create supposedly unpleasant noises. And while the chances of that being a real problem for most users is slim at best, Gloria's decided to go with south-facing switches to please enthusiasts at the expense of most gamers that would prefer north-facing switches for better backlit keycap compatibility, which is a clear indication of which audience Gloria's was planning to target here. The hot swappable sockets are, unlike the original GMMK, finally compatible with five pin switches, so no more clipping switches here. These are Gloria's branded, but they don't look very different from the Kale and Gateron ones we're used to see on other boards. It also has a rotary encoder, which was clearly manually soldered in, giving the large amount of solder in the joints and the excess flux residue left on the board. The controller here is an ST Electronics ARM 32 bits chip, which, as mentioned before, is QMK compatible. The GMMK Pro is the second Glorious peripheral to be compatible with their new Glorious Core application which is designed to be a hub for all their future products. And while this program is certainly a step up from the one used with the original GMMK, it is still a bit limited in the ways you can customize the RGB lights and remap keys. You still get the basics though. You can create, export, and import profiles with all your macros, remap keys, and lighting schemes, and you have three layers that you can customize with those, which is nice. On the negative side, you cannot change layers with temporary key presses such as accessing a secondary set of functions only while holding a function key, for example. 
and you cannot change the rotary encoder function, which is permanently set to adjust the audio volume in Windows. But at least you can't change the function of pressing it down, which is set as the mute key by default. At any rate, Glorious has promised to address all of these issues in future versions of the software. To record macros, you click on Key Binding, and then on the right side column, you click on Macro. Then you type in a name for your new macro, click on the Record button, Start Record, type your key presses sequence, then click on Stop Record, adjust the timing of each key press if needed, and save. Once that is done, just select the layer and the key you want to assign the macro to, pick the newly created macro from the drop-down menu, and then click on Save again, and you're done. The process to assign any of the predefined functions, such as other keyboard and mouse functions, multimedia, URLs, or browser commands, and others, to any key or any layer is basically the same. For configuring the RGB backlighting, you click on Lighting, and then on the right side column, you can choose either a predefined preset or create your own per key scheme. For predefined presets, you can set specific parameters, such as colors, brightness, and rate, which is the speed of the animations. And for per key schemes, you can either select individual keys or one of the predefined groups of keys on the bottom, such as WASD, Numbers, Afro, Mods, Arrows, and Side Lights, and then their color and brightness. Here, you don't have any of these sophisticated RGB programming capabilities, such as stacking layers or painting and drawing tools that can be infinitely tinkered with such as those you have on Razer Synapse, for example. But for simple color schemes, which is what most people need anyway, Glorious got you covered. Glorious advertised the GMNK Pro as compatible with QMK and VIA, but as of the time when this video is being produced, only QMK compatibility exists, which, given the complexity and risks involved in reprogramming and flashing keyboards firmwares with QMK, most people will probably stay clear of it. As for VIA, while it is super easy and intuitive way to reprogram compatible keyboards without the need to flash the firmware, the GMMK Pro is currently pending VIA compatibility completion, but no one knows for sure when it will happen. Unlike QMK, the VIA framework is not open source, and to be granted compatibility on it, a keyboard's PCB designer or manufacturer needs to go through the approval process of VIA's creators and moderators. So my advice is that you should not buy the GMNK Pro with the expectation that you will be able to use it with VIA. Even if the VIA project overlords decide to grant compatibility for the GMNK Pro, that process can still take a very long time. Before we can discuss my proposed modifications to the GMNK Pro, let's first take a listen to it in its stock form. For this first test, I equipped the GMNK Pro with stock alpaca switches from Prime Keyboards which are JWK switches that already come pre-lubed from the factory. These have polycarbonate top housing, nylon bottoms, and palm stems. For the keycaps, I use Drop's Artifact Bloom series, which is a PBT set with cherry profile on the black and white color scheme.
While the GMMK Pro in its stock config doesn't sound bad at all, I decided to make a few experiments here to see if I could improve both the sound and also to increase the flexibility of the plate and PCB arrangement here, since I know a lot of you out there will probably want to see that. As usual, the idea in all the mods I show in this channel is to give some easy to moderate difficulty options to folks depending on how much they're willing to tinker with the board. It just so happens that the solution I found to all problems with the GMMK Pro were actually on the easy side. All right, first, let's open this bad boy up. For that, I'll be using what has become the number one tool among keyboard enthusiasts everywhere I look, the WoW stick. And yes, while Banggood provided this one to me, I have to admit this thing is every bit as good and useful as advertised. It comes with all the bits and accessories you need to open not only keyboards, but basically any other type of gadgets. Highly recommend it. To open up the GMMK Pro, first you have to remove eight screws in the bottom, remove the top frame, and then unplug the cable connecting the PCB to the USB-C daughter board. Here, the first thing I tried was to replace the bottom foam with a thinner 1.5 mm sheet of silicone baking mat. The idea here is to test the impact of a different material on the sound and to give a bit more room under the PCB for the other mod we'll do later that will increase the flexibility of the plate. What I did here was to use the included foam as a stencil to cut my own sheet of silicone. In terms of softness, the silicone sheet is way more dense than the included foam. So even though it is thinner than it, it might actually have a bigger impact in the way this keyboard sounds. As already mentioned before, the included stabs are not bad. I'd say they're better than 90% of production keyboards out there. So if you're coming from a big box store keyboard, you probably will be very happy with the stock stabs. But since I operate more on the enthusiast side here, I actually tried to fix the tick noise from the right side of the space bar. I tried band-aiding the stabs adding more lube, and even tried a fairly sophisticated hit shrink mod suggested by the folks at Ramaworks. But not even those were able to completely fix the annoying tick. Since I didn't want to go through the trouble of cleaning all the lube mass from these stabs to try a holy mod, I just replaced them with some C3 Eco stabs I got from the Keydot company, which are usually very good. As other reviewers have noted as well, the GMMK Pro plates have very tight cutouts for PCB stabs, so not all brands of aftermarket stabs will fit without some filing of the plate. It seems they did this to allow you to also use plate-mounted stabs if you choose to, which, while not recommended, is at least an option here. You can see that a GMK PCB screw-in stab housing doesn't fit without applying enough force to jam it in the cutout. Luckily though, C3 stabs fit perfectly, since they seem to be smaller than GMK and Duroc stabs. Since I had band-aided the PCB area under the stabs housing already, here I just lubed the stems and the wire with my usual mix of Crytox 205 grade 2 grease and 105 oil and then dunk the tips of the wires on Permatex dielectric grease. No need to clip these steps, since they already come pre-clipped. As I explained in the play chapter, while the stock configuration already offers pretty decent acoustics, I wanted to test a few modification options here to see if there was any way I could increase the plate flexibility for those who want more flex in their GMMK Pros. The first thing I notice here is that the gaskets on the top frame are so recessed that they basically have no range of motion. So I proceeded to add a few more strips of gasket that were thankfully already included in the box on the top side of the plate where they'll touch the pre-applied gaskets installed on the top frame.
Then I tried a few suggestions I've seen from other reviewers out there. First, I checked to see if just replacing the thick included bottom foam for a thinner silicone sheet would make a difference in terms of flex. It didn't. While the PCB could use more space in the bottom, unless we somehow loosen up the plate, having more space under the PCB doesn't solve the problem by itself. Second, I tried removing the middle screws attaching the plate and PCB on the perimeter. Honestly, the difference was negligible. Then, I tried removing the two standoffs between the plate and PCB, but immediately run into the issue of having switches popping off the plate too easily. So it seems there is a clear reason for these standoffs to be there on a hot swap keyboard with this design. Then, I tried removing the light diffusers between the plate and the PCB on the sides to see if that would increase the range of motion, at least a little bit, on the extreme sides of the board. Nope. While we made the light even dimmer, it didn't help anything with the plate flex. As a result of all these experiments, I figured that removing the foam between the plate and the PCB would probably make no difference in the flex issue as well, while potentially making the board louder. So I decided not to mess with it, since again, I don't have a problem with the way this keyboard sounds with the foam, and my only goal here is to find a way to increase the plate flexibility. After all that, I finally realized that the problem here is not necessarily the number of attachment points between the plate and PCB, nor the softness of the material used in the gaskets or even in the plate itself. The issue seems to be primarily how tight the plate is sandwiched between the two halves of the case. So I decided to adapt my favorite mod for tray mounted keyboards, which is to use small 6mm rubber O-rings on top of the screw posts, but instead put them between the top frame and the bottom half of the case here, where the eight screws attach them together. The idea here is to reduce the excessive pressure between the two halves of the case to the plate gaskets by giving an extra two millimeters of space, or more like one millimeter after you compress the O-rings from the soft rubber material that the O-rings are made of. While increasing the space between the two halves of the case will compromise the aesthetics of the keyboard to some extent, since you now have a one millimeter gap in the seams between them, I figured this would be a worthwhile trade-off for anyone who wants a more flexible plate assembly. Besides, at least in the black version of this keyboard, you can barely see that gap anyway. You certainly won't be looking at it from the top when you're using this keyboard, that's for sure. And, well, did it work? I'd say yes. With the extra millimeter or two provided by the O-rings, the plate has way more room to flex which you can clearly see and feel when pressing on the plate or on the keycaps on the finished board. Now, for a light typist like myself, who doesn't bottom out hard on linear switches and sometimes doesn't bottom out at all on tactiles, the difference in feel is not particularly noticeable. But in sound, I think it is, which you'll be able to hear in the next typing tests. So here's what the final modded board looks like for the next few tests. Six additional gasket strips added to the top of the plate, where they touch the top frame of the case, 1.5 millimeter silicone sheet instead of the included bottom foam, lubed and band-aided C3 Eco stabs instead of the included Gloria stock ones, eight six by two millimeter rubber O-rings between the bottom half and the top frame of the case, and a modded cable where I used the USB cable included in the box as the basis. To mod it, I first cut off the USB-A plug, sleeved it with some yellow tack flex, coiled it with a Zap Cables aluminum coiling rod and collars, soldered a GX16 Aviator male plug to the end, and heat shrunk everything with some black and yellow heat shrink tubing. For the sound tests, I also added two additional configurations of switches and keycaps to see if they would change the sound and typing feel. The first configuration was the same one I used for the stock test, 62 gram stock alpacas from Prime Keyboards for $54.44 with Drops Artifact Bloom series with Cherry Profile and PBT on a black on white color for $50. Both had shipping and taxes already included. The second configuration was with 67 grams SP Star Purple tactile switches I got from AliExpress for $51.15 for a bag with 100 units. 
These were lightly lubed with my 50-50 mix of Crytox 205 Grade 2 grease and 105 oil and they feel great on the Moda GM MK Pro. These have nylon housing and palm stamps and they have a huge rounded bump that is very reminiscent of a Cherry Ergo Clear but smoother. Really nice tactile switch. These were paired with this gorgeous ABS GMK Kaiju set on Cherry Profile I got from Drop for $150 in January of 2021. GMK sets are crazy expensive and I rarely buy them. But this mix of green, orange and light green colors with hiragana Japanese sub legends were just too nice to pass on. Especially considering that I got it without having to go through a painful year-long group buy to get them. Both switches and keycaps prices already included shipping and taxes as well. And the third and final configuration was with 67 grams Gateron Ink yellow linear switches also looped with the same Crytox mix. While Gateron does not disclose the materials used in the switch, the housing seems to be polycarbonate and the stem probably a proprietary blend of palm with other types of plastics. These I had to lube with a slightly thicker coating on the stems compared to how I lubed the SP Stars to try to match the same level of smoothness I got from the SP Stars and the factory lubed alpacas. Here, I paired the inks with Drops High Profile MT3 White on Black ABS set that they always have it in stock for $110. Again, on the pricey side, but this is my favorite high profile sculpted keycap shape. Like SA, these are also spherical, but they are deeper with a slightly larger surface area that makes them easier to type on. I have to say I really like this caps profile, and as you'll hear later, they sound really nice and deep with the inks on the GMMK Pro. And final note, no switches were spring swapped nor filmed for this comparison, just looped. Now, take a listen to the sound test of the modded GMMK Pro with all the aforementioned modifications.
To my surprise, the modded board with the same alpaca switches and PBT keycaps sounds considerably different than the stock one. The sound is cleaner with a bit less resonance. While they seem to have a crisper pop on the bottom out, they are not perceivably louder than on the stock configuration. The sound is still very much muted and well behaved for non-damped switches on a metal enclosed keyboard though. But in my opinion, they definitely sound more pleasant. Not to mention that the C3 stabs sound way better and quieter than the stock Glorious ones. With the Tactile SP stars under the ABS GMK set, the sound is a notch deeper in pitch than with the Alpacas, but still very crisp and pleasant. And the typing feel of the SP stars is amazing here with its well-defined but smoother bump if compared to other super tactile switches such as Holy Pandas, for example. And finally, with the inks under the MT3 ABS set, while the bottom out is still crisp and defined as with the other two configurations, which is probably a factor of the aluminum plate, the sound here is considerably deeper, which is a known characteristic of Geteron inks. While inks V2s are not as smooth as the original older V1s, Lubing took care of that with no issues, and I'd say this is the configuration I'm keeping for this board. The keyboard not only feels and sounds amazing, but it also looks badass with a yellow glow between the black Ks and keycaps. But let me know in the comments below which combination of switches and keycaps you like the most here. As usual, I love spending time on the comments section, and I'm always there to answer any questions you might have about everything I show in my videos. So, what are my conclusions about the GMMK Pro after all these experiments? In stock form, the GMMK Pro with stock alpacas V2 and PBT Cherry Profile keycaps felt and sounded really good. Not the end game some people might have expected, but good, very good. Almost everything in the GMMK Pro feels high quality from the aluminum case and plate to the PCB and damping materials included. And while its included stabilizers are not exactly the greatest of all time, it is still better than almost any other production keyboard out there. Sure, typing on it doesn't feel soft and bouncy, nor does it have the crisp and defined bottom out sounds of fancier gasket mount custom boards costing two or three times as much. But then again, that's not what I'm comparing this keyboard with anyway. The sound of this stock GMMK Pro is actually pretty nice, if a bit too muted for those who would prefer some extra pop. But outside of the ticking space bar in my case, there was virtually no creaks, no hollowness and no pings whatsoever. For the majority of people out there, a muted keyboard out of the box will be considered an advantage since it makes this keyboard well suited to be used near co-workers and family members without driving anyone crazy. The companion software, while not setting any gold standards, is very usable. It does pretty much everything 90% of users will want, including macros, key remapping and backlight customization, without having a big learning curve and without too many zero-day bugs. And, if I had to point one of the best qualities of the GMMK Pro, would be its ease of modding. Glorious has been friendly to anyone who wants to open this keyboard up and tinker with it. Since this will not void its two years warranty, which is more than you can expect of pretty much any other large-scale peripheral maker out there. And thanks to that, you can make this keyboard even better if you decide to put some elbow grease in it. As you saw in the modding chapter, adding some more gaskets to the plate, which are gracefully provided by Glorious in the box, and then some simple rubber O-rings and replacing the bottom foam with a silicone sheet made a huge difference in improving the flexibility of the gasket-mounted plate, resulting in a nicer typing feel and a noticeably better sound. The GMMK Pro felt even better with these mods, with all switches and keycaps I tried here. Linears, tactiles, low and high profiles, ABS and PBT keycaps. I could daily drive this board with any of the configurations I tried here, and I'm confident that this board can feel and sound great with pretty much any combination of switches and keycaps you throw at it. At $170 US, with a two years warranty that does not prevent you from modding and upgrading the keyboard, and the promise to be an in-stock item starting sometime in the second half of 2021, the GMMK Pro is basically what this market needed right now. I'd say that in 2021, this is likely the entry to mid-level keyboard for anyone who have played around with some value or performance production keyboard, or maybe even some budget hot swappable keyboards before, and is now ready to take the next step in the world of custom keyboards without making any of the required commitments nor taking any of the risks usually involved in group buys. 
With this board, you have the chance to experiment with the ever-expanding world of MX-compatible switches and keycaps. And if you feel brave enough to try out your first keyboard mods, this board will be the perfect laboratory for you to experiment with stabs, different plates, gaskets, and damping materials. Now, to talk about the competition for the GMMK Pro, first we need to decide what are we comparing it to. While I saw many people setting expectations that were maybe a bit too high and unrealistic for a version 1 of a $170 semi-custom keyboard from a relatively new player in this industry, I say this keyboard can still be considered a resounding success if you compare it to basically anything in its price range in the entry-level custom keyboards market. While the GMMK Pro straddles the line between ultra-premium production boards and entry-level customs, I'd say that it wins in both categories. While you can get really good production boards between $180 all the way to $300, such as premium models from Vermillo, Leopold, and Realforce, which will come with good switches and premium keycaps, no large-scale production keyboard will give you the flexibility you have here. With hot swappable switch sockets and stabilizers that are easy to replace, nor the build quality with its heavy aluminum construction. Now, while some production keyboards can offer more polished companion software, Gloria's Core is already good enough for the vast majority of users, and going forward, it can only get better. It is definitely worlds better than what Gloria's had in the past for the original GMMK, which goes to show how much ground Gloria's gained in such a short few years. And what if you compare it to the entry-level custom keyboard options that are getting more and more popular nowadays? Well, the GMMK Pro makes a very interesting case against pretty much all of them. Sure, the NK65 Entry Edition is way cheaper at $95 and comes with VIA compatibility out of the box, but you don't get the build quality and the PCB-mounted stabs. The Portacle is also cheaper at $120, also comes VIA ready, and does give you a softer and better designed gasket mounting system, as well as better stabs out of the box. The Portacle review is coming soon to the channel as well, so subscribe if you don't want to miss it. But it comes completely disassembled, which can be a barrier to some users. And, like the NK65 Entry Edition, it is made out of plastic and doesn't give you the sturdy aluminum construction. The Ramakara also has VIA compatibility and costs the same $170 than the GMMK Pro. As the Portico, it also has a very well-designed gasket system, but it is also polycarbonate and doesn't bring the sturdy construction. It doesn't even include a case foam or silicone damper that has to be bought separately. Besides, it uses an HHKB layout that only diehard enthusiasts will be willing to use. And what about the semi-custom aluminum options from Drop? Well, those have been basically murdered by the GMMK Pro. Starting at $140 for the low-profile Drop Alt, going all the way to $200 for the high-profile Drop Control, with super stiff integrated plates, plate-mounted stabs that you have to immediately replace, no support for 5-pin PCB-mounted switches, and no easy-to-use configuration software interface, these are basically non-starters when compared to the GMMK Pro. As I said before, in 2021, the GMMK Pro is probably the entry to mid-level semi-custom keyboard to beat. In my IO Sam scale, I think this keyboard is perfectly priced for its performance and it sits comfortably on the top shelf of entry-level custom keyboards. And if Glorious continues to evolve this platform, as they have been doing with their line of gaming mice, for example, I think they will also become a force to be reckoned with in the large-scale semi-custom production keyboards market. All right, before we go, if you made it all the way here, let me take this opportunity to thank you for your time and your support of this still young and small YouTube channel. Thanks to viewers like you, we're growing much faster than I could ever dream just a few months back. And that means I'll keep bringing more in-depth content such as this one. And hey, if you enjoyed this type of content, why not subscribing and helping me build the best resource for in-depth gear reviews and DIY projects on YouTube? What are you waiting for? And if you like what you saw here, please leave that thumbs up on your way out. Always super helpful. As usual, if you want to check out any of the products and tools mentioned in the video, there are links for everything in the description below. And if you have questions about anything you saw here, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you again and see you all soon.